Welcome to UWA Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Got some great, great matches in store for you tonight. The wrestlers are ready, so let's join Buzz Benson in the ring for the action. Buzz Benson announcing. Thank you very much, Luthez, and welcome to another exciting Universal Wrestling presentation. This will be the opening match for this program, One Fall, with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing first, in the corner to my left, from the University of Chattanooga in Tennessee at 225 pounds, Pistol Pez Watley. And his opponent in the corner to my right, 230 pounds out of the Lone Star State of Texas, Amarillo, the great Nelson Royal. Well, and your referee, Wendell Burchett. One fall, 10 minute time limit. These two fellows know what wrestling is all about. Pistol Pez was two time heavyweight amateur champion of Tennessee. Nelson Royal has been an accomplished wrestler for many, many years. This should prove to be a great, great wrestling match. They both know about the sport. They've done the rudimentary work. And let's see how they fared out in the professional ranks. Okay, Lou, this looks like it's going to be one of those fantastic matches because we have, as you just said, two of the greatest tacticians of the sport. They know all of the ropes. Yeah, this one looks good on paper. I hope it looks good this way. Okay, there's the bell. Both men feeling each other out, center of the ring. Attempted leg dive by Royal, and the speedy Watley gets away, and then Royal counters the attempted leg dive by Watley. Now they lock up. Nelson gets Watley over in the neutral corner. Referee says, break, you're on the ropes, and they break. You know, the way Nelson tied up Pez's arms, you can see that he had some Greco-Roman experience. Okay, they're switching off right now. And the reverse waist lock. Watley, there's a counter by Royal as he takes Watley down, but Watley rolls right back up. That's Excellent that, condition. That takedown buzz with a beautiful leg takedown. Love it. Full Nelson. There's one of the oldest holes in professional wrestling, Lou. Yes, it is. I can imagine this is the type of thing the gladiators did in the arena many, many years ago. Okay, he uh, almost arm dragged him to get him down off of that. Uh, Full Nelson. Now the two lock up again. That's a that's a not a new takedown, but a good one. Watley was able to bounce right out of it though, almost to sit out there. Now they lock up again. There's an arm drag with speed. Boy, this Watley is Chris Lou. He certainly is. His fan, uh, reflex is fantastic. He really moves well. Wendell Burchett checking for any partial submission. Now you can see the pressure point there. It's on the elbow, the wrist, and the shoulder. Now, you see Nelson Royal trying to maneuver and get a little leverage. Watley swings into a hammerlock. That's a tough one to come to the combat. The way to really take the heat off of that one is to lie on your own back so they can't push it up your back too far. But Watley has him blocked so that he can't do that. And he's applying the pressure. Now he reaches around and actually has almost a combination hole Now here. he's moving, that's the way to do it. He had to get that shoulder up, though. We got a one count there again. Nelson has to watch those shoulders, and finally, Nelson figures, hey, that's a little too close. Now into the sitting position, kneeling position, and he's up. Watley still holding on. Hey, that's a nice leg trip. He really has some beautiful leg takedowns. And the fans here appreciate it. Both men in excellent condition. Step over to Toho off of that uh, takedown. That Piz really digs in there and gets that one leg takedown. He gets his head in there and really eats him up. He's really, really good. All right, now you've got the pressure points here on the ankle, of course. Also the knee and the hip. You know, Buzz, when you go after a takedown, a one leg or a two leg, you've got to dig in there like a just like a chipmunk and just keep going like a like a bird dog, and you never stop because once you stop, you've had it. Okay, the count got to two on Nelson. And there you can see Nelson Royal trying to figure out what to do here. He probably knows what to do, but the application, that's a different story. Watch out now. The count got to two. Nelson's going to have to watch those shoulders as Watley goes into a straight standing toe hole, twisting that ankle, and it's not supposed to be twisted that way. There's a kick out, and Watley hit the canvas pretty hard, goes for a leg dive, countered by... Beautiful sit through hammer lock. Right. That's a beautiful maneuver. Watley comes up with that 
hammerlock and you can see that Nelson Royal can read our logo there. He's face down. Watley applying the pressure. There's the view of the hammerlock and he also has a grip on the other arm of Nelson Royal. We are approaching the halfway mark here, Lou. Five minutes. Now, Watley's trying to roll him over for a possible press. The count got to one, two, and he bridged out of it. It was very close. Good bridge out, and it takes a lot of strength in the neck. You know, Buzz, I'm sitting here getting so engrossed to the match, I, I forget to help you here. I'm really enjoying this one. Now you can see that look on Watley's face. There's a lot of pressure being applied there. He just picks him right up and drops him. That was uh, off of that wrist lock. He just picked him up and the count got to two. And a last minute kick out. Front face lock, take down, roll over. He's going to try for a press. One, two. And again, Watley was able to kick out at the last minute. Reverse chin lock applied by Royal. Boy, these guys don't let up a minute, do they? A couple of buzz saws. I should say they are. Beautiful conditioning, a lot of knowledge. Now, trying to gain that leverage, Watley. The Royals got that chin lock. He's really got it locked on. You can see the lock. See the way uh, Nelson has that lock across his own. Now he, there he. It could be nearly he grabs be it. construed as a sleeper hole. If they stop the blood in the carotid artery, it could slow. Pistol Pez up. Oh, but Watley was able to get out, and boy, he just whipped him right over. That's almost an Irish whip the way he did it, uh, Lou. Oh, yes. He's so uh, dexterous. He just does anything he wishes, nearly. Well, he started out wrestling at uh, Notre Dame University, uh, I should say the high school in Chattanooga, and then he went on to college, UT Chattanooga, and many say that he would have won some medals in the Olympics had he so seen fit to go that route. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that, Buzz. And now, Nelson Royal, he knows how to take care of himself because when he isn't wrestling, he's bulldogging stairs in the rodeo. And right there, he got kind of bulldog. That arm drag off of the ropes there, and Royal goes down. But he's been down on the... He's bit the dirt before when he's on the rodeo circuit, Lou. He says next to wrestling, that's it. <laughs> well, I can imagine some of those cattle get pretty tough. Well, we're checking our time here, and uh, we are uh, just about at the eight-minute mark, so we've got about three minutes left as Watley has the upper hand here, or should I say he has the arm. There's a nice Beautiful. nip up. Oh. And there's a front face lock by Nelson Royal. This is a very, very devastating hole. And he drags him down, but Watley rolls out and comes up with a hammerlock. Beautiful counter mover. You know, the secret of really successful wrestling is not to just break a hole, but to come out with something. Right. It's like in boxing, taking a punch and then countering it and getting the better punch. He well, rolls. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Lou. That's the difference between a good wrestler and a great wrestler. There you go. Well, we got a couple of great ones in there, Nelson Royal and Pistol Pez Watley. You can see how Watley is relying on a lot of his collegiate experience there because he is really trying. You know, I think in college wrestling, uh, Lou, you get points if you can hold a man like this. Yes, of course. We've got uh, about two minutes to go. This is anybody's match. He has that Nelson locked up pretty good right now. He knows how to juggle that weight on him. And he got a two count off of it, and Nelson, out of sheer strength, was able to bridge up. And now he's trying to roll around. Watley's still trying to hold on. You know, there's an art in keeping your body very close and, and, and uh, compounding your weight on a man's body, and Watley does that very well. There's a count again, too, and he just barely got that shoulder off. Oh, he's got a pretty heavy boy on him, too. Now Watley still has a hammerlock now. Still has uh, Nelson. Now he locks him again with a quarter. This, it looks like a quarter Nelson this and could hammerlock. Be a, this could be a pin. Well, we have a minute left according to our timekeeper. This could be it. Uh, he's got him locked over pretty good. Can Nelson get that shoulder off the mat? He did roll off the left shoulder. The right one was down. And there you see the grip that Watley has on that hammerlock. His fingers camera are, shot. I'm sorry, the fingers are buried in his arm, hanging on so tightly. You see Nelson bridging, he's using his strength of the neck to keep those shoulders off the mat. And that is no easy chore.
He almost has a front face lock on him now, though. Yes. We've got about 30 seconds. He's trying to get his arm up to turn him over again. See? Oh, but Royal it comes out of that with a yeah, first goal. Yeah, Isn't that nice? Was just fantastic. He just waited, waited for the right moment and was able to uh, snap that hole. Now he's got Watley in kind of a predicament here. He hooked his arm on the takedown in the leg also, which is really fantastic. Well, we've got about 10 seconds to go, so somebody's going to have to do something here. We're at five seconds, four, three, two, one. Well, that last maneuver that Nelson Royal made proved that he's not only a great wrestler, but he's ambidextrous and made a beautiful move. He did a takedown there with a leg and also an arm at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, with the expiration of the 10 minute time limit, there was no fall, so the referee has ruled the match a draw. We'll be back with more action right after this. And now back to the action in the ring, Buzz Benson announcing. Thank you, Lou. This will be a one fall with a 10 minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my left, from Hartford, Connecticut, weighing in at 225 pounds, the fantastic Flying Fred Curry. <laughs> 230 pounds of meanness from the hills of West Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia, the renegade. about this renegade and he may be that but he's in there with a very fine wrestler by the name of Fred Curry Fred can make a good account of himself under any circumstances I'm anxious to see this renegade in action I have never seen him this should prove to be a real good match because as I said Fred can handle himself just about anywhere anyway uh, Lou Fred is perhaps one of the greatest as far as delivering the flying head scissors and the flying drop kick Thus, the nickname Flying Fred Curry. Has a lot of courage. Uh, I trained with Fred for a couple of years on and off. And there's one thing that he doesn't do. He doesn't discourage too easily. Well, Lou, I hear too that when he delivers that drop kick, when he's in midair, he will extend himself with a lot of power coming out of the thighs and hips. And boy, when it connects, I understand uh, when you were training him, he uh, leveled you a couple of times with him. Yes, he did. I ended up uh, defending myself. I started teaching him and, and, and started to look to my own laurels. Now, this is a very disturbing maneuver that Flying Fred Curry does, that bouncing up and down. It breaks the concentration of the opponent. It's a little frightening, too, Lou. Yes, because I don't know if he's going to drop kick or what he's going to do. Now, Wendell Burchett says, hey, there's nothing wrong. You better get in here. And actually, he gave him uh, somewhat of a count. Yes. Curry, this uh, kind of gets Curry loose, too, doesn't it? There's that drop kick, see? Just like you said, Lou, you called it. Well, he's pretty tricky, and the reflex is so good, it just happens. He had about uh, two feet between himself and the opponent, went straight up in the air. About a five foot ten drop kick, and it landed flush. There's a whip into the ropes. Hey, how's that? That's uh, almost the old monkey flip, isn't it? Got him on his head. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the renegade went right straight up in the air, and Fred had to watch out lest the renegade land on him. Freddie has a faculty of, of doing things in reverse, and the wrestlers are not accustomed to that, and that, that really upsets them. Okay, Flying Fred Curry uses that flying hit scissors, and that's one way to get him back in the ring, and the fans love it. And then he holds on to a regular head scissors. You see him go up there, Lou. He just went right up, got that flying head scissors, brought the man over the top rope back into the ring. Oh, sure, with the greatest of ease. Now, the renegade yelling about a choke. Fred Curry says, nothing to it. I'm not choking. I think the fans would like uh, for Freddie to use a little smash in the stomach there, but Fred was thinking about it. And there you see the head scissors really applied on the renegade. Renegade got a little careless there. Got a count of two that's, on him. Excuse me, boys. That resembles a crooked head scissor, which is a very punishing hold. Hey, 
Now we had a break there, Lou. Possibly slipped down into a choke, and Wendell Burchett made Fred Curry break it. Well, it could happen. Has a cartwheel. Boy, he does those things. Boy, I'll tell you, very distracting. Locks up over in that far corner. Uh oh, a solid right hand to the midsection, and another one lands right into the midsection. Now that's choking. That is illegal. Well, Fred has the faculty of psyching him out with all his maneuvers in there. Referee Wendell Burchett saying, hey, you've got to let that man come off of the rope. He has him over that far corner, lets him have a right hand just under the chin, whip into the turnbuckles. Well, Mr. Renegade, that did not exactly work out the way that he wanted it to. A solid karate, well, actually, it isn't a karate chop. It's just a judo chop, which is legal. Now, I don't know what he calls that, Lou. I'm going to have to ask him about that one. A reverse splash? I don't know. That could really be a punishing thing. You'd uh, fracture the uh, sternum that way. The fans have picked up the count. Well, Lou, what can you expect after that? I'll tell oh, you, he, and he just went on and, uh-oh, almost had him down. Hey, there's still a little life left there. Well, as Renegade has some uh, determination. There's a whip into the ropes. Back body drop. Into the turnbuckle. There's that flying body press, Lou. I haven't seen many get out of that one. Hey, that did it. Wow, he did not get saved by the bell. <laughs> that was a really strange thing. They were calling the time, and he had, I think, two seconds to go, and he could have ended up with a pinfall. And uh, the Renegade was nearly saved by the bell. And the official point. time of four minutes and five seconds, using the flying body press, winner of the match, Flying Fred Curry! You're watching Universal Wrestling, and we'll be back with another exciting match after this pause. And now, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, we're going to get back to some real great action now. Up to the ring with Bud Benson announcing. It's time now for more action here on Universal Wrestling, where you'll get main event type wrestling, and we have a main event type <coughs> match for you now. It's an Australian tag team match. It'll be one fall to the expiration of our TV time. Introducing first, in the corner to my left, weighing over 600 pounds combined weight from Pago Pago in American Samoa, Afa and Sika, ladies and gentlemen, the Islanders! And their opponents, first from Memphis, Tennessee, 250 pounds, attired in the black and white, introducing Troy Graham. His partner, 315 pounds from Copenhagen, Denmark, the Mad Dane, Eric the Red. This will be one fall until the exploration of our TV time. Well, this Eric the Red is a real tough fellow, and he has that bone in there that he tries to use to an advantage and strike someone with it, but he's going to be restricted in that area. But these Islanders are something else. These fellows are not only tremendous athletes, great competitors, but they are just beautiful people. I've spent a little time with them for the last couple of weeks, and I'm really impressed with these fine gentlemen from Samoa. And Lou, some of our fans might wonder about the absence of the capable <coughs> manager, gentleman Saul Weingroff, and well, it was a very unfortunate situation that befell our friend, gentleman Saul. Well, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I wanted to ignore it. I just cannot. I'm, I really, it's bothered me such a great deal uh, the man was actually hospitalized. He was struck and really abused, and we're going to hear more about that. Well, Lou, I'll tell you, I'm going to come right out and say that it was the interns and one Dr. Ken Ramey 
and if I can use the expression, because I can't think of a better one, the Pearl Harbor. They snuck up on Gentleman Saul Weingroff when he was entering the ring with the Islanders for a big match, and probably Ramey figured maybe with Saul out of the way, they could beat the Islanders. So they used the pile driver, an illegal hole, not in the ring, mind you, but outside the ring, Saul Weingroff was rushed to a hospital where he remained in serious condition, and we'll talk later on about his condition. Well, I'm sure that Ken Ramey masterminded the whole thing and run around at his men in there to injure the fellow, and it was really a shame because Saul has done a great job managing these beautiful people, and I was very sorry to see him injured in the manner that he was. Okay, so the Islanders, they seem to be a little irritated since that incident there, a little meaner than usual. Well, they know the world isn't quite the beautiful world that they hoped that it would be. All right, now we have Troy Graham. He's a pretty rugged customer. You see him there in the black. He has drawn the starting assignment for his team, and I do believe that is Sika. You know, I still haven't figured out who's who yet. Well, their power is just unbelievable. Now they lock up. Trying for a standing wrist lock there, Troy Graham. And you can see the Islander, there's a good look of him. He is trying to use the strength to reverse the leverage. They are really something. It's very seldom, bros, that you find men of the, the kind of power and the muscle that they have they have the reflex and can move as rapidly as they do. Sometimes they move so fast, as I said before, they look like middleweights. Well, Troy Graham is the one who decides he'd better tag into this mad Dane, Eric the Red. He couldn't do anything with the Islander. Now that's a flying mare, and that big fellow that he just flying mare was 380 pounds, 18 pounds. And that is tremendous to have the kind of power that you can take and toss a man like that. Hey, you know, our time is up. Uh, Lou, we've got to get out of here. Yes, we do. This match is over. Ring the bell. Ring the bell.